Uh, welcome back to the shed, everybody. It's us. It's your favorite shed dogs. Not the ones that go out and get bones out of the woods. The ones that sit inside and talk about essentially nothing for hours at a time. Slurp coffee. Annoyingly, from their La Cruzette. Ah. Yeah, La Cruzette. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we a little love 80, that. $80. I know. I know. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Poser Boy over there. I'm having a three cent coffee and an eighty dollar cup, and I'm feeling. Picked it up in, uh, picked it up in Bordeaux, actually. <laughs> Yon. Um, I don't know what we've got coming this afternoon. A whole bunch of listener mail. I hope I because we've had some delightful listener mail lately. I would expect we'll touch a bit on current events, but who knows? We'll have to wait and see, and so will you. There we go. Ready. This is the inaugural lighting of. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh. oh, this is the Shed Dogs on air. Right. Wow. So, our listeners, we're talking about KJ for Christmas got a fabulous uh, Shed Dogs on air light up light. You know how the ones they put outside the red light outside the dark room or the red light outside the recording studio soundstage? Our own soundstage, Shed Dogs, are on the air. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, who gave you that, KJ? The kids. Way to go. And I think that the, that, that when you order it, uh, it's all really sort of rather well made. I think you just tell them what uh, inscription you want on it. And it can be anything, right? I wonder what the maximum number of words is. Well, it's probably, I guess it depends on how small your font is. But I don't think, I don't think they actually wrote that. I think it, that was manufactured. Yeah. I love that light. Shed dogs on air. That must have been a delight when you got that. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, last night on Facebook, RJ and I watched KJ as he appeared in a live production of, what is it? <laughs> little Little Red Indian. Warrior. Little Red Warrior and his lawyer, I believe is what it was called. And I did watch to the entire end of that. <laughs> Good for you, Skinny. <laughs> that was pretty good. Pretty good. Fun. I think it's sort of a doable way to do theater, actually. RJ, what'd you think? Uh, I enjoyed it. I mostly noticed that uh, KJ was not uh, wearing a costume to type. Like, I think your character does not uh, suit your, your first character anyway, does not suit your visage. Is that fair to say? Well, he's, I think he's supposed to be a, a homeless street person, right? Oh, okay. Oh, he? Okay. Floyd is. He, yeah, he. It says he enters with a, a grocery cart and filled with, and he, he pulls things out. Like I, I wear a hard hat for the construction guy, a white hard hat, and he bonks me with a shovel, and you know, so that actually plays out. Right. It was. And then I have the. It was the construction guy the, I was thinking of. Yeah. I failed yeah. to realize that. I I just assumed that we were being. That if this was a stage production, you'd be doing costume changes or you'd have a supply of hats in a basket next to you so you could switch from character yeah. to character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's, there's, they say the three different wigs yeah, for yeah. the judges, right? The wigs just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we let a lot of that go. But it was funny because that's the first time we were actually switching ourselves on and off. Oh. Turning our own cameras off, and that's the first time we did that. Every everybody's really flying by the seat of their pants, man. Because we just got it uh, the day before. We did a little uh, test with the tech guy at the NAC, and uh, it wasn't like one of Richie's tutorials. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> like they they didn't really have a clue. I don't think they've done it before. I mean, they had a clue, obviously, but. And what what was the format? It was. Uh, what do you mean in terms of the view? It wasn't Zoom, right? It was um, some other product, but it was kind of similar it, in concept, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then typically yeah. you would have the main two characters side by side, sometimes three. Yeah. So anyway, there was sort of some glitches, but it, it worked out all right. There is uh, about two hundred and forty people who watched. Oh, because I thought it had like three thousand likes. Oh, yeah, probably. I did. Yeah, I looked after sure. to see, I, and, and I assumed that the likes were watchers, but I guess not. No, I think that was just, uh, they just liked the posting of the, the play. So, fun, so fun, that's fun. what you were doing on Monday. Yeah, we had yeah uh, two four-hour rehearsals, 
and then kind of a four hour call with the uh, with the performance. Fun, good. Cool. Is uh, is that going to end up in post COVID times being mounted as an actual play? Was one question. Yeah, yeah, it is, eh? yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it, it'll be in the bell at the Belfry in Victoria in. Well, they're saying September right now, but uh, who knows? It was supposed to be a, a joint production with the NAC, the Cult here, and the Belfry in Victoria. So, and they canceled the NAC because Kevin Loring. I don't know if you saw the intro. He is the artistic director of the Indigenous Theater at NAC. So, what right? does NAC stand for? National Arts Center in Ottawa, the big one. So, there's a English version a french version and now an indigenous version i feel so he just they na- they changed their name at some point didn't they like it would have been the something council for a while there i, I don't oh well, i don't know um anyway yeah so he's there for uh so he wrote this play when i was in when i went back to studio 58 to direct midsummer night's dream this was on stage wow it, it he had written it so this is 2000 wow. we're talking and Corey, my buddy Corey, and my buddy uh, David, uh, hyphenated last name, were both in it. <laughs> um, right? So, so it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. That is kind of. I would have never guessed that it was that old, because. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, it, it it's not dated no, at that's, all. That's actually. what I mean. They're, it seemed really um, apropos to like right now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, cool. Yeah, so Lor- so uh, Loring's just kind of he's the artistic director, and now so he said. I think he said after the the performance, he said, "Well, finally, the people around her can see that what I'm doing because he he actually wrote it and he will direct it, and so that he's actually doing something because it's a little bit weird, especially in COVID times, right? That's because there's That's there's weird. very little they, they can do. Yeah, well, why, why did he get hired anyway? Why did we hire this? What's guy? he doing all day in there? <laughs> yeah." Anyway. Soliloquies on the giant stage in the empty auditorium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad you guys saw that. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. I think um, Crawford Smith was the hyphenated name you were looking for there. Ah, Basil. <laughs> Basil Crawford Smith. Stratford on Avon. Stratford on Avon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we yeah. did that amazing tape. I, I don't know if we how much scripting there was of that. There must have been some scripting, and he was in it, and he had that great British accent. Um, and then that tape never, it's gone. It's lost to all time, unless, KJ, unless you have some old tapes. I don't think so. Tape of what? Oh, we did a little show. Like, um, that's where that Baffle, Basil Crawford Smith St- Stratford on Avon came from. It was scripted. Like, he, we gave him a ridiculously long British hyphenated last name. Yeah, and I, I, just I don't... thought it would be fun to make him say something long with that accent. And, and we recorded it on a cassette tape, and I don't remember much about what was on the tape, but I do remember that it was quite funny. And yeah. n- never, we did a couple tapes afterwards, never, ever met that standard. And that old one's oh. lost to time, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I remember hearing it sometime in the 90s. It was still extant in somebody's collection in the 90s because I, probably yours, RJ, I don't know, not mine. And the only bit from it I remember is uh, some advertisement. And the the idea was, is your spouse really angry in there? Is there oh. pots crashing? And, oh. And so it was all just an opportunity to make sound effects, right? Yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. right. Uh, a million tiny bubbles urging a woman to That's let go. Right, yeah. Let go. <laughs> That's, I forgot let about go. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that too. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Jeez. Uh, <laughs> well, misspent yeah. youth. Right? It's just like <laughs> bouncing around in there. <laughs> yes, Who knows? <laughs> okay. What there. else we got? What else we got? Now that we have thoroughly, and I'm going to say maybe permanently confused. Any listener that didn't grow up with us at that time, um, what else have we got? What else? How can we top that? Well, maybe let's get right into listener mail here. Let Mm. us. We have quite a bit has built up. I really thought we were staying on top of listener mail, Uh, but the oldest one here is dated December 15th. So it's been uh, about a month, about a month since we went over it. And I'm going to assert just for the comfort of everybody who feels maybe we've been ignoring them, that that is about as on top of listener mail as we've ever been. If the oldest one we got is only a month old, 
that's that's pretty sweet work by us by our standards so we have uh today is uh thursday january 14th listeners you might not realize it uh so cast yourself back in time to our time 2021 that's right oh yeah yeah and and happy new year guys i think happy new year it's It's all unfolding beautifully isn't it well isn't it mm, yes uh Oh, oh wait wait Yep. Shout out happy birthday to Tim of uh, Durham. It was his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, happy Tim. Happy birthday, birthday Tim. Tim. I didn't listen to your choir, but I will. I, I listened will. to your choir. It was fantastic, and we'll be covering that in detail Shit. later this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll just step away for five <laughs> no, minutes. No, <laughs> KJ, having just talked about your uh, your effort last night, it's the same. It's It's a lot of the interest in the topic is the same sort of thing. How did they do it, and what did it entail technically? So, yeah, oh, same cool. kind of thing. Mm, you watched the Canucks last night? Well, who was it? Oh, yeah, I was watching your... Uh, no, I heard it in the background. I heard the bit about the guy with Downs as I was... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you and Skin mentioned it, and I went and talked to Sue, oh, and she said right. that was yeah, very yeah. special. And also, did you know that it was that uh, East Indian guy from Brooks, Alberta, was calling the play-by-play? It was his first ever time uh, calling play-by-play on national TV. I believe that, yeah. Where are John and John is what I wanted to know. I don't know them. Are there your... Yes. They are always they always do the Canucks. John Cuthbert and John Shorthouse. Oh, okay. And they're, I, I think they're excellent, but... Well, that's the thing. So this guy from Brooks, the reason I know he's from Brooks is because that's where Mary's sister lives is in Brooks. So they, they know the guy and he's been doing the local Alberta broadcast for some time. And I suspect that he was a little bit, you know, it's kind of tough. Like it's your first time national. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. He was yeah, feeling yeah. the pressure. Sue said, yeah, he was kind of rough. Yeah. Does, does he, uh, do, do, do you know if he, does he do it in Punjabi? I don't know if he's one of those guys. Cause there's the, there's Vancouver guys, aren't there? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Well, probably not because the well, who knows? Who knows? Well, good game, and they play back. They play tonight again too, right? Back to back. Yeah. So I'm going to check that out just to see the. Uh, there's also a little bit more of a thing for the uh, for the kid that passed away. Uh, Sue says there's there's one more aspect to the ceremony or whatever. Oh. So look for something like that, and the same guy's going to announce the play by play apparently. Uh no, I said that. Uh, it, that everybody was wearing moss, a moss jersey, but I don't know if that was in the warm up or Sue, because Sue said it was in the warm up. Oh, okay, okay. Because yeah. I thought <laughs> the the rookie the rookie commentators would have a hard time naming all the guys. Oh, moss. Oh no, that's <laughs> uh, moss. Shoot, passes to Mo- oh, number nine moss, and there's number thirteen moss. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad it's back. So we don't know when we're getting our little uh, jab yet? Oh, I haven't even looked at... uh... Like, I don't know how that even works. Like, if you just sit here and live your life, does the doctor's office call one day and say, you've been, you've won a prize? You've been selected? Or do you need to really... Like, I'm, I'm doing a Crohn's MRI on January 22nd. So that'll get confirmed. I suspect they're going to say, yes, you have Crohn's. And then if they do say that, then I'm going to want to go on that medicine for life. And if I go on the medicine for life, it reduces your resistance to upper respiratory diseases like COVID, right? So that's why I haven't gone on it so far. And so... Right. So you'd want to get vaccinated early or... or Right. Very soon. Right. So I would call my gastroenterologist and say, hey, so what's the deal? I'm not going to go on this medicine until I've been vaccinated plus X weeks. So should I, how do I apply or should I just take my time and wait? Um, because he has a lot of other patients that are not on the meds because they're, I mean, the last thing you want is to reduce your resistance to uh, COVID. Yeah. 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 
All right. Okay. Well, uh, our comments date all the way back to episode 100. I think you'll be listening to this episode on what? 107? All right. Nancy from New Westminster has a new comment on episode 100, the dog's climactic lift. Congratulations on your hundred episodes. And I loved your telling of dirty dancing even better than watching the movie. It's a great feel good movie and you just made it feel even better. I agree with Pat. (laughs) I won't be able to watch the movie without thinking of your rendition. And for movies, shows never seen, I've never seen the Shawshank Redemption, much to the chagrin of my friends. You guys seen that? Yeah, and she should see it. Nancy, wherever you are, see it. It's worth it. In fact, if you had to choose between that and Dirty Dancing, see Shawshank, I think. I've just got such a terrible memory, though. There's so many movies I've seen. I've seen it once, and I could watch it. And I would be completely surprised at every development. A moi. Yep. Well, I always think that, except for then the movie starts, and then, you know, like a minute in, you, it all just comes rushing back. She goes on to say, I've never seen Game of Thrones, so what do I know? <laughs> you just didn't know. Uh, I think my all time favorite movie is Soylent Green with Edward G. Robinson and Charlton Heston. See, I didn't even, I couldn't even remember that Edward G. Robinson was in that movie. I, I don't think I would have remembered that either, actually. I, I don't, yeah, okay. I'll take her word for it, though. That sounds about right. It was just so remarkable that that uh, company, I don't know if they're still around, but there was a company startup called Soylent about five, five oh, years yeah. ago. I think they are That's still around. hilarious. Actually. Yeah, and you know they oh, do. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know they did. And she says, followed closely by Blade Runner. So Soylent Green, Blade Runner, we could call those semi-modern classics, I guess. Careful. I don't want to get an irritated email from Leah. Well, Brown I know. She's going to be upset already. But that's why I said semi-modern <laughs> just as a defensive. But I know it won't work. Anyway, dogs, keep up the good work, and here's to another 100 episodes. Thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great... Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Just interrupt ourselves. Soylent is still going. It is. Meal replacement. Yep, meal replacement. And uh, I don't want to get any lawsuits (laughs) or anything, but I did recall, didn't they have an issue with a recall because there was some kind of tainting of something or another? (laughs) Uh, too yeah. funny. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> Oops. Some, some people got into the mix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't recall any of that, but that you would think, oh God, I just can't even imagine all the karma type thoughts you would be having, right? Oh, let's call it Soylent. Big laugh. You know, oh, don't worry about that. It's a brand new thing and it'll be a great product and everyone will just, and then that happens and you just think, geez, are the gods angry with us or what? Like. <laughs> Anyway, I don't recall that. Okay, Nancy moves on to episode 101, The Dog's Gambit. She says, I agree with Lee. Gender parties are ridiculous. Who cares what the gender is? And not spending 40K on a wedding is not being grouchy, but it's being realistic in today's world. People can't afford a down payment on a home, so why spend so much on an event? One of my favorite weddings to officiate at was the backyard barbecue. Everyone brought food. Everyone was casually dressed. I was introduced as a neighbor, and at the allotted time, I called for everyone's attention and told them we were about to start a wedding. Surprise, it cost practically nothing, and was an amazing day for everyone. That would be rather awesome. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes me think of going in a rowboat around Trout Lake for your, uh, (laughs) your, uh, yeah. What do you call those kind of parties? Stag. Stag party, yeah. In Baron's Handmade Punt. That was fantastic. I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Two cases of beer nearly caused us to sink. (laughs) (laughs) What do we have, six guys jammed in that thing? Yeah, it was fun. Okay, on to our next one here. New comment on episode 102, this shed dog does not exist.com. An episode, this is from Lee of Courtney, an episode of such learning. We can remove dubbing on Netflix. We can color wood to fix those little scratch flaws. And there's a super creepy website with AI generated human faces. This episode was loaded with new info and all for free. And for the record, I think tales from the altar would be fascinating. Go get that efficient ordainment PJ. Well, I don't think that, but, uh, 
Okay, put Nancy on the payroll because she's probably got a pretty hefty store of anecdotes. I, uh, I, I think guess. so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a person named NIMH commented on the video uh, 103, a shed dog's Christmas, in YouTube, and her comment was, "I loved this. Happy Christmas, <laughs> smiley face." Now, I have to say, there's a number of these kind of terse comments that you kind of wonder whether these are just kind of spammed out to everyone. Uh, I do happen to know that that one because I checked. Okay. On it. I put my super internet dark web skills to test, so that's a warning to all you listeners. I'm capable of <laughs> stuff you can't even imagine. But I got to the bottom of that one, and it is one of our uh, spiritual founders. Really? who's, yes, very closely related to me, uh, living in Montreal. Not in Jesse's neighborhood, but living in Montreal right now. Oh, very good. And coming back for visits. So she she uh, uses that ID for anonymity, but that was her. Nice. All right. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> next one. This came in on our website on episode 103, Hot Dogs, from Michael of Coquitlam. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. He goes, good job, RJ. Episode 103, and he calls it Hot Dogs. I know for a fact that's not the name of the... Uh, no, I don't remember what <laughs> no, the name no. of the episode is, but it's, he's, I think he mixed up the episode name and the subject of there his you email. Go. We listened to episode 103 last night, uh, December 22nd, and I was delighted to hear that Richard and Sue decided to have the Chicago-style hot dogs. I'm glad you liked them. Once COVID is over and we can travel again, I encourage everyone to visit Chicago. It's a great city with wonderful architecture, lots of skyscrapers, Frank Lloyd Wright designed homes, and of course, Chicago style hot dogs. Your story about cooking the hot dogs was like a Christmas present to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Happy about that, Michael. That's good. You're very well. All right. On the same episode, which was actually called A Shed Dog's Christmas. Oh, there you uh, go. Lee from Courtney says, Merry Christmas, dogs. Although now it's practically the new year. Well, turns out it's pretty well the end of January by the time you hear this. <laughs> but no matter. Uh, virtual online time knows no calendar boundaries. I must say, I agree with PJ about the early decorating thing for Christmas. We don't decorate or put up the trees until December 15th and then things come down the week after New Year's Day. I really like Christmas a lot and I don't want to get sick of it by the time December 25th rolls around. I don't know if, as PJ says, it's morally wrong to decorate early, but it just isn't right. Mind you, it is 100% not right to leave outdoor Christmas lights up all year, so he'll have to admit that before it becomes a bad habit. It's far too late. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like two nights ago, I just decided to turn them on. <laughs> but today I unplugged them, so. Uh, so that's it. That's that's your deinstall? Yeah. As long as it's not obvious from street distance that they're still hanging off the gutters. <laughs> they're de- no, they're they'll be, uh, So all I got to do is I just got to unplug mine and the, the rule no, is. No, next yet. nice day when I'm not super busy, down they'll come. <laughs> I mean, after all, I have the uh, five millimeter conical LEDs, four inches spaced apart, five colors, uh, fairly high end <coughs> strings, you know, two times 50 <laughs> foot. And I bought a couple more on sale after Christmas from walmart.ca. So, of course you did. Yeah. All right. So you're saying you're going to leave them up all year? As no, got to take them down. They're too expensive. I've been taking them down every year, so... And, uh, yeah. All right. And she continues the link to the New York times article on real versus fake trees was most interesting. And there certainly isn't an overall best. I've had an artificial tree for a long time and each year I think maybe it's last, but then we decorate it and it looks just fine. And it has a bit of a backstory. So I'm reluctant to let it go for that reason too. I bought it in the late 1990s at the army and Navy, which used to be on Hastings in Vancouver. Mm. Now, late 90s, what are we looking at now? That's 20, 20 years, years ago, okay. if that's the All question. Right. 20 and a bit. I, mean. I and two girlfriends, one of them was Moira, who joined me in the shed a little over a year ago. We walked over and bought it on our lunch hour and then carried it back to the office, which was, at the time, at the landing in Gastown. 
The folks on the streets of downtown Eastside have seen just about everything, but even still, the sight of three dressed for the office women carrying a six foot Christmas tree through their neighborhood caused a lot of heads to swivel. Very nice. <laughs> All right. And this is back on episode 102. This shed dog does not exist.com. Nancy from New West says, This person does not exist. What a weird site. What I really like, and just for our listeners, a reminder. You go on that site and you see people who are completely computer generated and they look very realistic. Flaws, warts and all, literally. What I really like was the question, how do I know I exist? (laughs) Apparently, (laughs) the only way is my conscious ability to think about my existence. Beyond that, I'm on my own. Laughs out loud. So I'm going to go with, I do exist, so take that. Thanks for the plug as a marriage commissioner. Whenever you are ready, Pat, I'll be there to officiate. However, we are only tenured for 10 years and I have two years left, so hurry up. In BC, we are called marriage commissioners or officiants. The term justice of the peace is an American term and not used here. After I retired, I received a posting from a friend where they were looking for marriage commissioners in New Westminster, so I applied. I filled out the application. You had to be retired, own a vehicle, and give proof of volunteerism and or public speaking. I was shortlisted out of 110 people, went to a group interview where we had to do a mock wedding, then wrote an exam. i tell you guys, when I read this, I thought, well, I don't think I can be an efficient. You know, I've done public speaking, but you got to be able to ad lib, right? Well, you got to be somebody for sure. You, you got to do stuff on the fly. You know, I hardly yeah. qualify for a podcast, let alone officiating. <laughs> podcast that we started. Yeah. Lo and behold, I got a note two weeks later saying I was hired. My training consisted of a half day going over the damn paperwork that has to be completed. I conducted my first wedding on July 24th, 2013. I have a ton of stories to tell and will do so there over the go. next few podcasts. And I think we're going to hear from her shortly. And uh, we hope to get her on here and give us some uh, live yeah. stories. I think that's a good idea. I think the same thing that makes you qualify as an officiant makes you qualify as a podcast guest. Even you on this a, highly regarded You got to know what to do when the bride actually turns around and walks out. You got to know yeah, I just, how to handle it. Yeah. I, I uh, just can't even really imagine all the stuff she's going to tell yeah. us. Uh, it should be fun though. Cause I'm ju- I'm sure you see a lot in 10 years of doing that. I'm pretty sure you see a lot of pretty fun and Sure stuff. enough. She comes right back with one. She says, Hey dogs, I said I would share a couple wedding stories with you. I have married people from age 18 to 92. The latter of which was one of my favorites. The 92 year old bride was living in a care facility and wanted to marry her 86 year old beau who also lived there. There was only a handful of people in attendance, and one of the nurses played and sang this beautiful song as the bride walked in. She had everyone in tears, including myself. After the ceremony, I asked the groom if this was his first marriage, and he shyly answered that it was his second. His first wife had passed away a few years before. I then asked the bride if this was her first wedding, and she replied, Oh no, dear, this is my eighth. I didn't ask, (laughs) I didn't ask what happened to the others. (laughs) Just thought I'd also let you know that we get paid very little. A wedding costs $78 and 75 cents, including tax versus the hundreds of dollars you would pay to the church or those that have marriage consulting businesses. We do get to charge for mileage and can accept tips. I did not know that, and I don't even know if we gave our officiant a tip or not. I hope we did. Do you know, yeah, I didn't know that really either. When I saw this email, I I kind of thought, I didn't really realize that those guys were sort of a government service thing. I I, I didn't get that. So to our listener who's still at marrying age, um, just remember that. You can tip. (laughs) However, a lot of people don't think to tip a government-appointed marriage commissioner. I put a lot of time into meeting with the couple and going over all the details. I'm putting a little bit of annoyance into my voice when I read this, right? 
Yeah. Going over all the details of how the wedding will proceed, then preparing the paperwork, showing up and waiting for the wedding to start. They are invariably late and then conducting the actual ceremony. Barring that, it is everyone's best day of their life, usually, and I really enjoy being a part of making their day special. As it is Christmas, I expect it to be much busier, but unfortunately, the most recent COVID restrictions have impacted my business. Here's wishing the dogs and all your listeners a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Right back at you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, we're getting uh, towards the end here, I think, to the newer ones. We got a new comment on episode 104. We give you the shower toilet. This is from Lee of Courtney. Happy New Dogs Year. Good opener, and not surprisingly, I have a couple of comments. To begin, the crown is not somewhat fictional. It is fiction. Historical fiction, based on stuff, but fiction. It's not to be taken any more as accurate than our movies about wars, inner workings of government, developers of social media platforms, etc. It's amazing how viewers watch a movie about real people and events and think they're documentaries. And uh, this is RJ butting in here. Guilty. So watching season one of The Crown, I'm going, wow, can you imagine? Whoa, it sure was crazy being queen in those first years. <laughs> That's exactly what I end up thinking. And I think, why are we drawn to historical fiction? Why is it that for myself, if I know a movie is based on real events, that elevates it automatically. It makes it more interesting. And then, well, yeah. And and to extend, to extend that thing just a little bit. I mean, one of the reasons you do watch them is because you think you have some idea of the actual history and a lot of how well you receive that historical film is how well do they blend the stuff that you think you actually know with stuff that you recognize is probably fiction with stuff that you don't know is fiction. And that's what sells it is the combo. It's not necessarily a belief in every single word and gesture, but it's a belief that some percentage of it is based that's on that. The, yeah, and it's just like when you're developing a conspiracy theory, it's the same thing. You need to make sure that there are factual things in your story. And those are little touchstones for people. Yeah, I know that. So that that all works. Anyway, she goes on to say that uh, they are not documentaries. And The Crown is a good example of that. Watch away, but be very aware you're not watching history. You're watching someone's fictionalized viewpoint of some parts of something that have been put together to gather lots of viewers. Also, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Also regarding PJ's idea of toilets and showers, not only is KJ right that they're already in some RVs for space saving, but also in some passenger train sleeper cars also to save space. I can't mm. speak to whether people do two things at one though. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, very interesting movie recommendations, RJ. And as soon as I'm finished watching my endless TCM supply of truly classic <laughs> movies, as opposed to Dirty Dancing and Ferris Bueller, (laughs) I'll get on to at least one of them. The kayak film, The Bait Ball, sounds terrifying, and I will therefore absolutely tell my husband about it because he's an ocean kayaker. (laughs) That's great. And we did put an improved video uh, in that episode 104 on the website. That kayaking video is really something to watch. Yeah, it is actually. Just, I mean, yeah, no, it's fun. If you didn't see it already, go see it because it's worth it. Thank you, Lee. Now, this is the funny one on YouTube, uh, a comment from Auntie Calavini, and her comment is nice. It's great, (laughs) terse, to the point. The only thing that bothers me about this is Auntie Calavini is not wearing a blouse at all in the picture, (laughs) and uh, no bra either. <laughs> but, but I've done. Yeah. So it's so it's possible that it's not just specifically to us, and that maybe Auntie didn't really watch the episode I that think, carefully. I think Auntie wants us to click on her link and find out more about her. Nice. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> I did see that, and it's funny. I saw like listeners. We we of course we have an email account, and. You know, so anytime there's email in there, I get all excited. I go, oh, this is so good. 
and then it's somebody trying to sell us something or a note from Google security. And it's the same on the YouTube channel. There's a comment. There's a comment on the videos and it's Auntie Calafini <laughs> in no clothes saying, nice. <laughs> oh. yeah. All right. I'm just, I'm, I'm going back to, is it Lee that said justices of the peace? That there aren't no, any in Canada. It might have been me. Oh yeah. No, no, it was Nancy. Yeah, Nancy. It was Nancy. Yeah. Yeah, because I I was sure that um, when we went to the Rossland courthouse to marry the French and the American, the French guy and the American hitchhiker, we went to the courthouse, and I thought that 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 was a justice of the peace. Yeah, and I th- and that I th- I thought ours was as well. Um, yeah, but it says that there there is justice of the peace, but they do other things in right. BC, in yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think someone who is a justice of the peace can probably apply to be an officiant. It wouldn't surprise me if they overlap a little bit. Yeah, but that would But make their sense. role as officiant or the other thing she gave us. Okay. Uh, anyway, I was distracted there for no, a moment. No, it's fine. Okay. And a new comment on a more recent episode, 105, Jesse of Montreal, part one, a really fun uh, little episode we did very recently. Lee from Courtney said, episode 105 was a nice tight outing and it was great to hear Jesse from Montreal on as your guest. For a young man, he has lived a lot of lives, all of them interesting so far. Plus, he was a really good guest to listen to, told great stories and told them well. His time as a cruise ship musician reminded me of the cruises I've taken. When I was head of communications for the BC Automobile Association, In the early 90s, I went on a few as the BCAA representative slash host for the cruises the travel arm of the association sold. He mentioned the toilet shower combination in his employee quarters, and that's quite right. So there's yet another example of your money-making invention in action, PJ. He also mentioned the freezers for the um, recently departed cruise guests, and he's also quite right about that. I didn't have to deal with that on the cruises I attended because they were shorter seven day tours to Alaska, but for sure on just about every one of our longer hot weather cruises, I'd get a notification that Mr. or Mrs. Cruise guest had passed away. And sure enough, down to the large freezer, he or she went while the other one carried on with the cruise festivities. (laughs) And I have one cruise musician anecdote. There was a piano slash crooner in one of the lounges named Bobby Vegas. Of course he was. And she says, and I am not making that up. He was kind of a Steve Lawrence wannabe. Think Bill Murray and his Terry Velour parody. I ran into him in the ship laundry one afternoon. <laughs> he, it's just all there of it. You are in the laundry and there's, there's yeah. Bobby Vegas. He was full velour jumpsuit mode and we chatted a bit. He asked where I was from. And when I said Vancouver, his his response was, great town, love that town. (laughs) And then when he had his clothes in hand and was ready to leave, he turned back of the doorway and said, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm just saying later, babe. Shot me the (laughs) finger gun sign and disappeared. (laughs) Well done, fantastic. Jesse is quite right. Spend much time on a cruise ship and you'll get loads of stories. And for many of us, a desire not to really do it again. <laughs> Fantastically. Thanks for that. That, that is a good one, Bobby. I just think the idea that somebody would in real life turn back and say, I'm not saying goodbye. I'm saying later. But just holy <laughs> mackerel. And that was in the nineties. Like, 20 years prior, it's conceivable, but in the 90s, even that was already like beyond parody. <laughs> and oh we did uh, forward that uh, email to a uh, special guest, Jesse, and he came back with uh, Lee's letter was fantastic. And I'm flattered to be called a young man, but I guess age is relative. I'm sure she would have a few interesting cruise stories herself, and her Bobby Vegas anecdote is perfect. I met a few of those guys too. We had a guest entertainer for a couple of weeks whose claim to fame was teaching Regis Philbin piano. <laughs> and it's all he would talk about. And he wore a who wants to be a millionaire t-shirt or ball cap every single day. In fact, listening to the episode, I realized I could probably do five or six hours worth of just cruise ship stories. 
and probably another few hours on the elections. So thanks, Jesse. Yeah, that's those are both good letters. I like those. I, I was thinking <laughs> about that. The claim to fame guy, Regis Film. I don't know what my claim to fame is going to be, but I think one of them should be that whatever my claim to fame is, it is not having taught Regis Film to play piano. Imagine that being the keystone event of your life and advertising it every single day because it's so important to you. Jeez. Yeah, KJ, KJ, you should bring up every episode that you worked with Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. Or, <laughs> Oh, I'll, just, I'll just show pictures. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is me. Uh, uh, actually, I'm in front of Sidney Poitier here. You can't see him, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at him, and I'm on a horse. <laughs> we were down on uh, we were down on Whidbey Island in the uh, early 90s and saw The War of the Roses being filmed. So oh. Danny DeVito was there. He was the director of that show. And uh, he even had a little director beanie hat on. And uh, Michael Douglas was there. And then who was the female star? Kathleen Turner. Is that her name? Yeah, I just don't know if she was in it. Yeah, she was in it. And then she had to run down to the end of the wharf with a suitcase. And so it was really cool. We got to watch her running down the wharf and then the camera dolly running down there after. And so, yeah. So I've been around the world a bit. You better get a t-shirt. And did they, did they say, Kathleen, that was perfect. Let's do it again. Did they say I was that? using my ultra zoom lens to make it feel like we were really close. So I heard nothing. Um, you know, I had a little public service announcement. It'll only take a second. You yes, want to hear it? Do it. Uh, you, it may have been given away in any list, but about a week ago, actually now, Haley's car wouldn't start. Battery dead. And I'm in Costco shopping around. And I go to the automotive section and there's batteries there and... 114 bucks. Jeez, that's, I'm not paying 114 bucks for a battery. That's it's ridiculous. Cheap, right? So I leave it. Well, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, yes, it's cheap. <clears throat> Let's move on. Go on. <laughs> no, I mean, my bad. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it I, I just didn't, I had no idea. I see KJ, you had uh, an item about Nate, a one man show. Did you watch? I did. Did you watch Skinny? I did. I did all the way through to the end. Congratulations, Skinny. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to get through that. I like to be professional about things. You know what I mean? It's part of the show that I try to do. Whereas I did not watch all the way <laughs> through the end. I cheated somewhat. But let's talk about it. And I'll, I'll tell you where I cheated. It's hard to talk about this without spoilers, though. How do we do the pitch to get people to watch it? Because I do think it should be watched. Well, I just think it's a fascinating form of comedy. It's uh, somebody commented that it was uh, that's what Commedia dell'arte is. You know, when he uh, uh, she says um, she just suggests that her buddy's in the audience and she waits. <laughs> like she, I think she calls his name and she waits, <laughs> and the audience knows what's going on. Because there's a, she's she's already taken a uh, done the couple at, the, at the, the start, and somebody volunteers. Like it took a little while, but somebody and that is that's sort of some sort of perfection, right? That the audience they all know that she's going to come and pick somebody if somebody doesn't volunteer. So tension. And yeah, and they they were sort of I'm not sure how everybody thought about the. The first couple, because that the woman seemed a little bit kind of upset at her. Helene? That's right. I thought. She- oh my God! There was so much clever shit in there. It, it is just too much. Very man. much. Too in, much. In some ways, she's like a magician, isn't she? <laughs> yes. Like a yes. little misdirection, and she just she had so much fun with that uh, Uber versus Lyft thing. That was just great. Oh my God! Yeah, just everything, and just uh, you know. A, just a ton of thought and that's and she, uh, she's got another show coming out apparently that how old is that one because i'd never heard of it until you had mentioned it i, I don't think it's that old I, i'm not sure I, but I don't know. boy oh boy that form of humor which is building a deep deep sense of discomfort before the big release and then you're laughing like you can't believe how much you're laughing that's just fantastic but boy, oh boy, there's moments when you're watching, you're going, I don't know, man. 
I know, yeah. Well, Dylan almost couldn't watch it just because of the fear of being in an audience where there's participation and you just don't want to be picked you, and you hate the feeling of even having to consider that like he he couldn't watch it and he, you know he's not even in the room man but he was worried about it but i know that feeling i was thinking about it and we talked about this on the podcast i don't know sometime in the last year i have no idea when the whole appeal or lack thereof of what you might want to call cringe comedy so it's comedy that makes you very uncomfortable and I'm not saying that that show was this. It had elements of that. Yeah. But that whole business of unease and anxiety and tension that's then released by the punchline. Well, didn't we talk about Borat and, and just that uncomfortable kind of pranking kind of yeah. comedy? And yeah, I hate yeah. that shit. Well, and this had elements of that where I just, I was uncomfortable a couple of different times because I wasn't sure when there was interaction with the audience, I just wasn't really sure at the beginning, how's this going to go? Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't like that. I didn't like feeling unease or tension. But because I'm a professional and I'm committed to this yeah, podcast. You did that. I went with <laughs> Whereas it. I, I did do some scrubbing towards the end, you know, through the YouTube. Uh, but uh, listeners, yeah. we have not given too much away here. You, you really get some great surprises. Very, very cool show to watch called called yeah no it's just called nate colon a one-man show that's n-a-t-e and that's on netflix and it's only about an hour i think mm-hmm. isn't it or yeah. less yeah. maybe about an hour and it was worth toughing it out like there was parts where i was uncomfortable but it actually was worth it i, I would recommend yeah i saw uh there's this guy I, you either hate him or you like him i happen to like him a lot he's called putty puddles the clown yeah the clown and I saw him live down in Seattle at Bumbershoot. Um, his, his show is called Puddles Pity Party. And yeah. uh, he's like six foot six. And he's dressed up as a clown. He is a clown. And the th- part of his shtick is how amazing his voice is. So he can yeah. sing like you wouldn't believe. And here's like. Oh, does he actually have a comedy Yeah, act? yeah, yeah. Like yes, a stand-up? Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. And part of that stand-up is you don't want to be in the front row if you're Dylan. And, you know, I think Sue and I saw part of it. I think she stuck around. It was understood that she didn't have to stay there because this is a festival. You know, you can come and go, Mm. right? And so we purposely sat midway back. So hopefully he wouldn't pick on us. We did not sit in the aisle because we didn't want him running up the aisle and grabbing us. Um, and so Sue, uh, so anyway, she, she did take off about halfway through. She just did not want to be picked, but yeah, he would pull people up on the stage and do fun stuff with them. And no, 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 it was, uh, none of it was as uncomfortable as Nate, a one man show, but pretty, pretty fun. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to see puddles pity party, that's pretty cool. And so is some of that actually recorded? Uh, oh yes, I, I've seen a lot of his his music videos. Yeah, like right? the the big one he does is Royals. Um, yeah, I forget yeah. what her name is. The singer, Lord, Lord. Yeah, he does a version of that. That Lord herself says, "Oh, you have to hear this version." So she loves it. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, look around and I'll put some links in the show notes to uh, see if we can get some of his stand up. He does a lot of. Uh, of course, he has props. He's a clown, but he also has video running behind him. So there's all kinds of things like he's talking about a certain, let's say a state in the U S there might be the map of that state up there. There's just stuff going on. Uh, it's a fantastic show. So I'll see if I can find some classic, uh, footage of that. Cool. I really love it when you suddenly realize like when they have a video going behind them, all his stuff has been tagged to whatever's going on unmentioned in the background. Yeah, like when a show, it looks effortless and a huge amount of preparation went into it. Yeah, you, you suddenly realize, GC planned every minute of this. And like I say, you know that they do it. It's like stand-ups. You listen to Seinfeld talk and he plans every hesitation, every eyebrow raise, every turn of the head. But when he's actually doing it, it's not evident to you that that's what is happening. And when they do the video in the background, I, to me, I like to be cued to the fact that, oh, this is actually a pretty sophisticated thing all put yeah. together here. Sue and I saw Seinfeld about a year and a half ago. And one thing that struck us was I didn't realize his comedy is very physical. 
Ah, uh, you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. In the same sense that you said, yeah, when he turns his head, it's all thought through, and yeah, he does so much with his body, largely tied to walking back and forth across the stage, which is kind of a thing. But yeah, pretty amazing. So there you go, Nate, one man show. All right, check mark. Check mark. That is all we have. You have arrived at the sad, regretful ending of another glorious bunch of time with the dogs in the virtual shed. But fear not, we'll come back and you do too. If you have stuff, if you think of stuff that we should be doing to mix it up, make it more fun, make sure and let us know. We're still having fun, but the more the merrier. I hope that you are all anxiously awaiting your chance to receive the vaccine. I know I am. I'm, I'm hoping really what I'm not looking forward to is so much the vaccine, but a return to a much more normal life, as are all of you, I'm certain. So let's just keep hoping for that. And in the meantime, let's just keep enjoying what we get to do, which is get together, shoot the breeze, and keep ourselves safe. Talk to you later, boys. See ya, PJ. See ya, RJ. See you guys. Bye.